Okay, we're back for part four of vibration analysis in your AIT 2101 class. Uh, and I'm going to rehash everything we've been through, but you kind of know where we're at as far as the forces and, and what's causing them and, and the impact that it has as well. Okay, so we've talked a lot about measuring vibration and stuff. So, uh, you know, how is all this vibration measured? Okay, what are we, you know, we're talking about it, but how exactly does it get in our hands? How's that data, that information get into our hands? Well, one of the things that you use is a vibration data collector, okay, and they come in all shapes and sizes and all price ranges. Uh, I remember when I first started, uh, the technology was relatively new, uh, and you could get set up for anywhere from thirty to forty, forty-five thousand dollars. That included the uh, data collector, uh, the accelerometer, and the proprietary software, which is where a big part of the uh, money is spent. Uh, not so much on the hardware as it is that proprietary software. Okay, and each uh, you know you got uh, a broad spectrum as the as far as the capabilities of these uh, data collectors and also the software. What it can tell you, you can spend very little money uh, and get very little uh, use or information from it too. You can spend a lot of money and get a lot more detailed information. Um, but like I said, when I first started doing this, uh, the, the cost was around thirty-five thousand dollars for us to get set up. And now, uh, what we've got here at the college <coughs> has uh, now been put on an iPad, okay? Apple does everything, don't they, okay? So, uh, we've got an iPad, just a, you know, an iPad, what's uh, four, five hundred dollars, um, about what it costs. And we've got an accelerometer that hooks to the back of, a, of an A to D, or analog to digital uh, box. You can kind of see this, okay? Cable's hooking in there. And it takes that... Uh, analog signal and converts it to a digital signal that you can see on the iPad, okay? And, and then uh, the information that is collected through this transducer will go onto the iPad and you can see what's going on, what vibration, what frequency is the amplitude, and things like that. And we are going to get a little more uh, in depth with that. But uh, this is the iPad and you download the app and the app is where uh, most of the money is spent. This ran about, like I said, about $4,000, maybe four or 500 of it was the um, the iPad itself, uh, and this accelerometer uh, was about mm, three, four hundred dollars. So as you can see, uh, the majority of the money spent uh, was uh, on the app itself. Now this is an accelerometer. I'll try to get a little closer for the camera. This is an accelerometer, very typical. Uh, you'll hear this called a transducer or a pickup. Okay. But in essence, what it does, this one has a couple of str a rare earth magnets that it will. Uh, connect itself to the uh, to a motor um, and attach itself, kind of affix itself, and vibration data can be uh, read uh, off of there. Now what's got what's going on inside here are you got a couple of crystals and they are one is acting on the other and as the as the machine vibrates up and down, uh, it, it, one uh, crystal impacts the other and it creates a millivolt signal, an analog millivolt signal up through the cable and then it goes into the iPad where it's converted to digital information where we can make sense of it and see it on a spectrum. And we're going to look at those screens as well. But uh, this is a typical, uh, you know, this is a three full three phase motor, it's only third horse, but you basically your uh, accelerometer will attach to, its, to the motor like this and nice and firm and you typically have several different positions that you put on, put this on, and you always want to make sure it's real firm, but you typically take a, uh, a couple of horizontal, a couple of vertical, and an axial reading on your uh, motor. We're going to get into that just a little bit later. But I just want to show you, uh, like I said, I just want to show you the uh, data collector and also the accelerometer that we'll be using in the lab when you come in to in-person lab. So once again, we're going to use a blower's assembly uh, to kind of demonstrate uh, and contextualize what we're talking about. Here's the blower. This is your three-phase motor, okay? And you've got a couple of accelerometers here on top, vertically mounted. Got, you can't see them very well, but there's cables right there going to one right here and one here, and they're horizontally mounted, okay? And you've got a pillow block bearing that we've talked about before. You got one mounted here vertically and one mounted horizontally on this pillow block bearing. And of course, on the other side of the blower is going to be another one, and you would mount them just like you would do this here. And one thing about this is that consistent placement is absolutely critical when you are collecting vibration data. Okay? For example, now I've got this three phase motor that we're talking about here. And if I attach my accelerometer here and I collect data, I'm collecting data, vibration data. Uh, 
kind of how much the, the machine or the motor is vibrating up and down. This is ex clearly exaggerated, okay? But it's collecting vibration on how much it's uh, vibrating up and down vertically. It's also monitoring that bearing right there, okay? And we also want to take a horizontal reading like this, and it gives us an idea how much play we got going on here because um, you want to compare these two, the horizontal and the vertical, because sometimes the vertical uh, can be the result of a bad bearing or imbalance or something like that, or it could be a loose mount. It could be the mounting's loose, and all you have to do is tighten it up, and, and your vibration, uh, you've increased that stiffness a little bit uh, that we talked about, so it's opposing the vibration force. So you tighten it up, and some of your vibration should go down, okay? But you also want to be aware that you got another vertical reading on this motor, it's back here in the back, because it too has a bearing. We want, to, we want to check the health of that bearing as well, and we're going to check there horizontally as well, and then axially along this uh, axis of the shaft, and the larger motor is going to have a place to connect it to where you can measure that thrust that's going on and occurring inside the shaft there, okay? So um, one thing that is, though, very critical is that you consistently place the probe or the, uh, the accelerometers in the same place every time. If you are looking at this motor right here on the front and you consider, you, you think, okay, I'll just put one vertically, and you read the data that's coming out of that bearing right there, okay, the next time you go to it, if you think, well, that's position number one, and this thing, you put it in position number two, and you record this position number one, it looks like the data from this vibration, vibrating bearing has now moved to the back, and you may misdiagnose and say the back bearing in that motor is bad, when in fact it was, because you've been inconsistent with your, uh, the placement of the transducer or the accelerometer, okay? So I say that to make sure you want your data to be consistent, particularly as you're trending a failing component, a failing bearing. Uh, you know, if you put it in the wrong place, suddenly it could look like the bearing has, the, the failure has gone away, and it really doesn't happen at all. Um, it's just you've got the transducer in the wrong place, and it's kind of hard to keep up with. So, again, the bottom line is to be very consistent with the placement of your accelerometer or your transducer, or pickup as it's called sometimes as well. All right, and, and like I said, typical uh, motor, electric motor uh, pickup positions or transducer positions, you usually have two vertical two horizontal and one axial, like I said. And that way you can detect whether or not it's bouncing up and down, vibrating up and down as a result of imbalance, or, or do you have a loose mount, okay, or the mounting bolts loose, or, or is, there, is the grout in the mounting structure, is it broken and, and, uh, and loose, okay? You can, you can detect a lot of things this. I once had a motor, <clears throat> three-phase motor, that uh, was giving me a lot of vibration, and I thought it was, uh, I thought I had a, a, a bad, uh, uh, an imbalance, which I did, uh, but uh, I looked down there and there was a big crack in the foot of the motor, so I had the mechanic to come weld it up, and that added to that stiffness, and then it gave me a real true vibrating or easy, or vibration reading, and I did have an imbalance, which caused the crack, but uh, we were able to, to you know, address a couple of different issues as we were looking for uh, an imbalance in that fan motor, okay? Um, and again, on a, on a gearbox, okay, well, we talk about crane gearbox. This is a typical uh, crane box uh, gearbox, excuse me, and it's got multiple stages through it. So we put an input, uh, we connect this shaft there to our three-phase motor that drives this input shaft, and it goes through a series of uh, different gears, gears, and we're gearing it down because we want a higher torque, lower speed, higher torque from a crane motor it carries a tremendous load, sometimes 15, 20, 30 tons. Uh, sometimes, so we will gear it down, and each one of these gears uh, has got its own set of bearings. And we're also going to be able to monitor uh, gear teeth mesh, that, you know, how they mesh, and if you've got a broken tooth, that will send a vibration frequency all of its own. So we would place the transducers here outside these bearing caps here, these bearing housings, and we want actually gearboxes are a little tougher than motors because they're a little harder to get to, but there's a lot of data to be uh, to be gathered. Uh, inside that gearbox just by using the transducer and placing it in the right place. But um, I want to talk to you just briefly about the different ways you can mount a transducer, okay? The one that I showed you <coughs> had the horseshoe mount right here, okay, the rare earth magnet, kind of a horseshoe mount, okay? And it mounts inside you know, on top of the curvature of your motor like this, okay? If you, mo if you mount it like this on the curvature, it's going to wobble back and forth. And that's not good because any movement, any motion in that accelerometer uh, is being viewed as vibration, but it's not really, it's not clean data, it's not, 
it's, it's just trash on your spectrum, and we're going to talk about that a little bit uh, shortly. But the thing here is, uh, these are different ways that you can mount the uh, accelerometers to the motor to collect that vibration data to see how it's acting, how the bearings are, the health of the bearings, and different other things. So, um, we have the accelerometer, and this one's just got a probe screw to the very end of it. It could be steel or aluminum, okay? And this is the worst method of, of uh, extracting vibration data from anything, okay? Uh, the reason being is because I will hold that vibration probe on the motor, okay? The tip right there will touch the, the uh, housing of the motor. I'll hold it, and I may be exerting five pounds of pressure to get that reading, okay? Well, somebody behind me comes along, and they take the reading next time, and they only exert three pounds, and the guy after them, maybe ten pounds. So it gets, there's a lot of variation there, and that impacts how the amplitude of the uh, readings that we're getting. The stronger you hold something, that, the more force you use, the stronger the vibrations will be picked up in that probe, and it's going to look like we've got a big problem. I come along, three pounds, and our spike is, energy, is, or our, our spectrum is very low. So this is really the worst way to, to mount and, uh, that to a motor and get any real good data. Also, when you're holding that, you cannot possibly hold that probe uh, you know, perfectly still. So any motion like this, that, of that probe, you know, kind of grinding on the, uh, and rubbing on the housing of the motor or gearbox or whatever you're measuring, uh, it's going to come up as, as a vibration because it is vibrating. Okay, the two metal on metal, okay, it's creating a vibration signal. It's junk, it's trash, you can't use it, and it just dirties up the, what the real data you're looking for. So, again, all that to say that the probe method, holding it by hand, is the worst way to try to extract vibration information uh, from your machine. I showed you the horseshoe, the uh, little horseshoe rare earth magnet. Nice, strong magnet. You just want to make sure that the surface that you're mounting it to, that you're sticking it on, allowing it to be attracted to, uh, it's, it's not through you know quarter inch of grease or anything like that. It's got to be a clean surface. You might uh, uh, you know sand off or, uh, or grind off some of the paint so it gets a good, uh, a nice, good uh, connection there, and, and there's no chance of getting uh, bad information. You can also uh, use epoxy and glue them to the motor, okay, or little pads to the motor. And sometimes you glue pads to the motor and you use the magnetic, um, the uh, magnetic probe, but or, or, or pick up. Um, and also you can have you can uh, glue it to a pedestal and screw the pedestal to the um, to the motor or whatever it is you're looking for. And um, these are all these two right here are more permanent, okay. As is the one with the screw. Here you would have to have your motor sent to a machine shop. Um, or have your mechanics drill and tap, uh, like maybe a quarter twenty hole and, and thread it, and then you screw the accelerometer onto there, and it stays on there permanently. Now, these permanent methods are really good; they give you really good data. Here's the problem, though, because if you remember, we've got five different locations we prefer to read vibration data from. So each motor has five, and if I've got twenty motors, that's a hundred accelerometers that I've got to purchase, and uh, and and you know, install, and also when the motor or gearbox or whatever it is we're looking at goes bad, we've got to take that off and install it on the new one. A little more labor intensive, but it gives you a good firm hold. I guess overall, magnet's the easiest one. There are drawbacks with the magnet, and I ran across one at the time. I was taking vibration readings on a vertically hung uh, scroll fan. The shaft was running vertical. The pill block bearings there um, were there, and I was uh, hooking the accelerometer to the bearings while it was rotating because you know the machine has to run so you can make it vibrate and collect the data. So I had the accelerometer on there and I had one of those big, like old style uh, telephone cords, curly cords that stretched out and then re retract and everything. They're, they were, you know, they got, uh, that's great. But I stuck it down on there and while I was collecting the data, pulling the data and recording the data off that bearing, I, I don't really exactly know what happened, but the cord got wrapped around that fan shaft and snapped it right out of the machine. Uh, and snap the cord in two, and you know, kind of had to go back and explain that. It wasn't that big of a deal. Like I said about four or five hundred dollars, and they, we replaced it. But you know, you are working around rotating equipment, so you got to be really, really careful. But these are typical methods that you'll uh, use to attach an accelerometer to a piece of equipment so you can extract that data. And again, this is the worst. These are much, much better. These are more permanent, more costly, but they give good, solid data. And this one, too. Now, one other thing, um, the, with the technology changes, uh, some of these accelerometers uh, are Bluetooth, and so you can go with your iPad and you can uh, hook, 
uh, link up through Bluetooth and extract that data and kind of stay away from it, to, you know, so it's much safer. Uh, they're, they're more expensive, and they'll have to be permanently mounted too, but you can stand back at a distance and collect it via Bluetooth, and so it makes it safer, faster. But uh, technology has changed a lot, um, and, uh, but, you know, you're still picking up that vibration data, and that's what we're after. So that's a little video on, on the accelerometers as to, as to where you put them and, and what you're doing. Be sure to, we're going to wrap this video up. Be sure to, to uh, tune into part five of this series, and we'll be wrapping things up shortly on vibration analysis. Again, I hope you're taking notes. If you're having problems or you don't understand something, by all means, come see me, and we'll take care of it. Okay? Thanks again for watching, and be sure to, to uh, pull up the next video. Thank you.